The Xiaomi EC2 CW was released much later than its competition. So I decided to take a page out of Xiaomi's book and release my review of it a good six months after its release. I bought this with my own money and have extensively used it. So here is what I like and don't like about it. Starting off with what I like, the shape. It's phenomenal and it's completely unchanged from the original EC2, which I did quite enjoy when I tested it in the past. It is extremely nice. If you're looking for an ergo mouse shape, the EC1, EC2, EC3 are the benchmark for a reason. If you're unaware of the history, basically these shapes are extremely famous for being the most popular kind of gaming mice for a long period of time among Counter-Strike professionals and a lot of different FPS professionals who like ergonomic mice shapes. And because there's such a benchmark, a lot of mice on the market that are ergonomic actually strongly copy the EC shape design philosophies. Mouse like the X Lite, mouse like the Razer Death at V3, mouse like the Glorious Model D. The shape is a pretty kind of natural and intuitive intuitive ergonomic shape. There is a deep groove on the left for your thumb with the thumb buttons. There is a slight gentle slope inwards for your pinky and your forefinger on the right. And the whole mouse kind of slopes outwards like this towards the back and towards the bottom. There is gentle grooves on the clicks for your fingers and the click position is pretty high though I don't find this to be as uncomfortable as some other mice uh, because the hump isn't so far back that it forces my palm and my fingers to be up. It just kind of very natural feeling and it just feels like how a mouse would fit under your hand if you just placed it on the table. There's a good reason why the ET shape is so beloved and it's unchanged here, which is good news. Another thing I really like is the coating. It is very nice and extremely grippy and it's so good you don't need to use grip tape. This was one thing I really like about the Vexi XC Wireless and Zowie mice as well in general. Very good coating, super grippy. And the fact that it doesn't need grip tape is good because it means that its 75 gram weight doesn't need to be added onto with additional accessories. It is a pretty chunky and heavy mouse, but I would actually say that 75 grams is a pretty all right mouse weight. It doesn't feel particularly light, but it also doesn't feel too heavy that it's really a problem. And I think also because this mouse is designed for FPS veterans coming from the classic wired EC2, EC3, EC1s, they didn't want to make it too light so that the transition was too drastic, which is understandable. It's not something I particularly like. I wish this was like 60 grams, but it's all right. But the 75 gram weight does also mean a couple extra things that I do like about a mouse are made possible. Because it's allowed to be a little heavier, it still has support for a charging dock, just like on a Razer Viper Ultimate. More on this charging dock slash enhanced receiver in a bit. And it also has the ability to basically have good build quality because light mouse tend to have a lot of creaking and flex since they make the material really thin, like that submarine. Another thing I like made possible by its weight is the battery life. It's pretty good on the EC2 CW, it can last a good week. And it's up there with my G Pro X Superlight, which I'm gonna do a revisited review very soon. I also do quite like the clicks on this mouse because they use these Huano Ping Dot Blue Shell switches which are really really nice but I don't quite like how the mice clicks aren't separated from the top shell which means while you can click across the whole top part of the body there is a very crippling lack of consistency in click feel across the board. In fact it does have a little bit of a spongy bottom out and a little bit of a loose pre-travel feel to it which I'm not the biggest fan of. However I'm guessing they didn't really change this too much because this is basically identical to the click feel you find on the EC1 or EC2 wired. And considering this is targeted at that audience of veterans, it makes sense that it's not too different. I would like Zawi to have a nicer, crisper click though, or at least have that as an option in a different model. Now let's talk about things that I think are like just kind of mid. The sensor. So this uses a Pixar 3370 sensor and truth be told, it's more than enough. Any FPS professional wouldn't even be able to tell the difference and you will be fine with it. But if you are caught up in the spec arm race and you love the placebo of having the latest and greatest, then this mouse clearly isn't for you. I think the more frustrating part about the fact that it has the older 3370 sensor is really just the fact that for the extremely high price that you pay for this mouse, it's kind of annoying that you have to deal with like last gen tech as good as it still might be. Now, the reason that I think Zowie didn't actually put the latest generation sensor into this mouse is probably because they took a really long time to develop this enhanced receiver thing, which supposedly improve connectivity, stability, and will make sure that you don't lose any connection mid game to your mouse. As far as I can tell, it makes zero difference. A normal USB dongle with a little USB USB extender from Logitech, Razer, Vexi basically performs the same and in real world use you genuinely will not notice the difference. There are some supposed improvements in polling 
rate consistency and things like that. But a lot of its functionality seems to be kind of achieved just by using the more modern 3395 sensor and running motion sync technology instead. Just why I think this is kind of a pointless addition to the cost of the EC2 CW, but it's also not something that hurts its performance. It's kind of nice, I guess, for like a desktop ornament and a charging dock. And it's also nice for the placebo effect to think that, oh, this is going to give me much better performance, which is a large part of gaming mice these days. It's just the placebo effect. Another thing that I think is pretty mid is the thumb buttons. They're kind of loose and wobbly, which for the really expensive price that this mouse costs, uh, genuinely don't think that that is all that satisfying. It's still crisp and light and snappy, but there is quite a bit of post travel and squishiness but it's also very similar to the clicks of this mouse, so I'm guessing it might be an intentional choice for a certain type of feel that they're going for, keep things consistent with the wide predecessors. The scroll wheel is ratchety and loud, and it feels like a 90s office mouse. I personally like it, but I think a lot of people won't actually like this kind of scroll wheel. But once again, because of its target audience, this is probably the ideal solution. The mouse feet are big and nice, Nothing to talk about here, so I just put them in the mid category. Oh yeah, and also on the bottom, you do have like buttons to control polling rate and DPI, so it's like a traditional mouse. But apart from this fancy, dancy, enhanced receiver, if you don't want to use it, or you think the bulk is goofy and shouldn't be on your desk, or you just bring it along for like a wireless LAN tournament, so you don't want to bring a big thing. The EC2CW also comes with a standard little USB type A dongle, so uh, fret not if you want to keep things traditional, practical and simple. Now let's talk about the bad things about the EC2CW. The price. 250 Singapore dollars, this thing is exorbitantly more expensive than its competitors. It costs as much as a final mouse on resale in Singapore, which let's be honest is a bit of a travesty. Also, the pricing of final mouse is a travesty, I'm not condoning that. But for that price, you're really getting a gaming mouse that isn't all that impressive. You're getting a gaming mouse that is heavier than its competitors, has a older generation sensor than its competitors, has clicks, scroll wheels, and thumb buttons that have more wobble, pre-travel, post-travel, and squishiness than its competitors. And its only real advantages are battery life, build quality, coating, and the iconic shape, which now has been cloned into oblivion by things like the Pulsar X Lite, and the glorious stuff, and the Death at a V3. It also has a charging dock, which does make it a pretty hard sell. But then again, those drawbacks that I talked about with the clicks and the scroll wheel and the thumb buttons might weirdly enough be great selling points for a lot of people. This mouse was clearly not intended for the enthusiast gaming mouse crowd of people who want the cutting edge, crisp, ultra fast, ultra light systems that we have as gaming mice today. This mouse was clearly targeted at the buyer who is a veteran gamer who was used to Zowie products. It's a product for Zowie fanboys or Zowie loyalists or just people who are used to Zowie and don't want change. They want the advantages of going wireless. And as far as that is concerned, it's a pretty good product. With that thing guys, so much for watching. 